On today's show, Delphi is selected to conduct autonomous tests in Singapore. Automakers set a first half global sales record. And will GM finally come out with a mid-engine Corvette? All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for August 1st of 2016. While some people like Ralph Nader say that autonomous cars are decades away, Delphi just proved them wrong. The automotive supplier announced it's going to lead a project to put a small fleet of autonomous cars on the road next year. Delphi was contracted to run the program by Singapore, which suffers from horrible traffic congestion. The first phase involves six electric vehicles that will run on three pre-arranged routes, which link up with public transportation. In the first two years of the program, there will be a driver in the car to take over in case of an emergency. But by 2019, there will be no driver. Delphi is now actively seeking a car company to partner with and wants to use an existing battery electric car that can accommodate four to six passengers. For the second phase of the project, it wants a purpose-built BEV with doors that open and close automatically. Singapore is also going to expand the service to deliver goods, such as groceries and dry cleaning. And it's not just Singapore. Delphi says it will announce additional pilot programs in North America and Europe later this year. Car sales continue to remain strong across the globe. According to Wards Auto, automakers sold 7.9 million vehicles in June, which is a nearly 6% gain compared to last year. In Europe, sales fell just short of 2 million units, up 6% from a year ago. In North America, sales were up close to 4%, hitting 1.8 million vehicles. Over in Asia, sales were up a strong 9%, topping 3.6 million in sales. But South America continues to struggle. Sales in that region plunged 15% in June. Overall, the industry is doing well on a global basis. In the first half of the year, sales hit a record 45 million units, which is up 4% compared to 2015. And still to come, a look at which cars are the most popular with thieves. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Cybersecurity is a growing concern. Heck, one Jeep Cherokee gets hacked into and people absolutely lose their minds. But every day, there are still thieves breaking into cars the good old-fashioned easy way. And the National Insurance Crime Bureau just released their annual Hot Wheels list of the 10 most stolen vehicles in the United States. And if you've ever seen one of these lists before, you already know what's at the top of the list. Honda sedans from the mid to late 90s. Not sure what it is about these vehicles. They've just got to be super easy to break into. Now, you might think that newer vehicles are more difficult to steal and therefore wouldn't make the list, but that's not the case. At number five is the 2014 Toyota Camry. Just two spots down from that is the 2014 Corolla, and just one spot below that at number eight is the 2015 Nissan Altima. I think if this list proves anything, anything at all, is that we all need to go out and buy two-door sports cars. There's not a single one on there. A few years back, Tesla invested $5 billion to build the world's largest battery plant called the Gigafactory. The facility, located in Nevada, will mass-produce lithium-ion batteries to help drive down the cost of its vehicles. The company even claims that by 2020, it will build more batteries at that plant than all other manufacturers combined. And just this past weekend, the company celebrated the grand opening of the new facility. Tesla has ambitious goals to sell half a million vehicles by 2018, and the Gigafactory is an important step to achieve that goal. And in other Tesla news, the company announced it's acquiring the solar energy company, SolarCity, for $2.6 billion in stock. As part of its master plan, Tesla revealed it's interested in SolarCity because it wants to create a solar roof for its cars with integrated battery storage. In addition to cars, the combination will allow the companies to create 
fully integrated residential, commercial, and grid scale products. Coming up next, will GM finally build a mid-engine Corvette? For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. GM has always denied the possibility of a mid-engine Corvette, but the rumors about one never seem to die. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, John was joined by Todd Lassa of Automobile and Chris Parker of Roadshow by CNET. And here's what they had to say about those rumors. I think there could be two Corvettes for, for two reasons. Number I think one, there should. We, we had Taj Juchter in here when the current gen, the C7, came out. Mm -hmm. And we asked him about mid engine. He says, I hear all about that. There's the rumors are all over the web. He says, I'm here to tell you unequivocally, there is no such program. He says, none that I know, and he says, I think I ought to know if there is such a program. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was vehement about it, not going to do yeah, it. Yeah. But then you look at the Ford GT, and they're not going to make a whole lot of them. Right. It's essentially a hand-built car. It's, it's mid-engine. I mean, come on, isn't that the way to do it if you're going to compete against them? I agree. I've written about how they should almost make that a sub-brand and sell them in both Chevrolet and Cadillac dealerships, and that they should maintain the traditional Corvette uh, as a front-engine rear-wheel drive car that would be affordable, would be a, a cheaper alternative to a Porsche 911, as, as it's always been, uh, and then also do a higher-end uh, mid-engine car, which actually could just be a, a Cadillac if they so choose chose. But I'm, I'm hearing else. Uh, I'm hearing otherwise, and I, I may have some misinformation or disinformation or I, disinformation. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right, though. I think it's going to stay Corvette. I think there is going to be a mid-engine car. Um, I, I think and I hope that they keep the two-tier thing going um, because I think one of the great things about the the Corvette for a long time is its everyday usability. You know, real trunk and all and all of that, um, which it's it's a weird thing to talk about. But you talk to Corvette owners, longtime Corvette owners, and they brag about how much stuff they can fit in, or how great their gas mileage sure. is, and their visibility and all of that. And you just won't get that in a mid-engine car. But I think you're right. I mean, there's there's so much action now in the hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollar price point and up. They can't build enough of a, a lot of these types of cars. So there's there's a market for that. Um, so I, I think, you know, if, if the performance is there, they could, they could probably sell both. And, and frankly, we've already seen a lot of those grainy, lo very long distance spy shots. Yeah. And granted, they're all camouflaged, but when you look at the back end, it doesn't say Cadillac, the lights say Corvette. Also joining them for that show is Ray Arandowski, the owner of a gorgeous, almost all original 1971 Cadillac Eldorado that was just featured in this past weekend's Concours to Elegance show. So if you want to learn more about that car and much more, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and please join us again here tomorrow.